When it comes to being a developer, if you talk to anybody about a job or if you look at any job description, you may notice that you need experience in order to get a job as a developer. But how do you get that experience if you don't have it? Hmm. Well, continue watching. I'm gonna tell you how I got my first job as a developer without having any experience. Hey y'all, I am Tiffany. Welcome back to my channel. If you are returning or if you're here for the first time, thank you for joining me today. I create things that live online and this is one of them. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my channel to keep getting this content coming straight to your, well, it's just, it's just coming through on the YouTube screen, so yeah. But if you're interested in that, please go ahead and subscribe. As some of you may know, I got my first job as a develop a web developer about three or four years ago. When I when I first started looking for positions, I was transitioning from a position at a life insurance company where I was reviewing Excel sheets and just saying, "Oh yes, these num these numbers look fine." Um, and that sort of thing. So it wasn't a very exciting job and it had minimal to do with anything in technology. I have a video on my channel about my journey of getting into tech. So if you're interested in that, uh, click that link above. Also, if you're interested in me making a updated version of that video, cause it has been about three or four years since I've made that video. So if you do want an updated version, give this video a like and I will have that out for you. So there I was no work experience as a developer and enough coding knowledge to be dangerous, but recruiters and hiring managers just didn't see me as someone that they really wanted to talk to and ultimately get a job as a, at a company as a developer. So here are some things that I recommend to you that you do that have helped me in the past. So hopefully they'll help you as well. The first thing I recommend is building projects. Uh, I've preached about this, I'm pretty sure, in several other videos, but the fact of the matter is you have to be creating things. You can work on side projects. If you have done the coding bootcamp, you could continue to add things to those coding bootcamp projects as time progresses, as your knowledge increases. Hopefully you are continuing to add more things to your projects, assuming that you enjoyed the project. If you have a great idea for a project, make it, create it. You have the greatest gift right now of being able to create and code and make something that doesn't exist. Make that happen, you could do it. And it's a good way to learn, build your portfolio, and then also it shows that you're growing and that you don't need, a, you don't need someone to tell you that you need to learn stuff. You know that you need to go learn things and you're willing to go do that. So definitely do that. Find something you're passionate about and just go for it. The next thing I recommend is um, make sure that you're putting your code on GitHub. And also when you're putting your code on GitHub, don't forget to link um, your GitHub or your portfolio website and or probably both. I put both on my resume. So make sure you have on your resume, GitHub, and your portfolio website where it displays your projects and it should tell you some information about those projects as well. And then also demos on, that, on those projects too. In addition to that, if you're on social media and you're active as someone who's talking about tech or someone who's just interested in tech, um, I do recommend that you also have a link to your resume, to your LinkedIn, to your portfolio website. Any place where recruiters or hiring managers can get in contact with you, make sure you have all that information available to them so they don't have to go all over the place trying to find it. And of course, when it comes to your resume, make sure those links are actually clickable from your resume and they go exactly to the place where you want them to go. So make sure you test out those links as well. Another thing, in addition to putting your code on GitHub, is contributing to open source. And I know it's scary, 
but I, I definitely recommend that you try it out. There is a thing called Hacktoberfest that happens once a year and it's for the whole month of October. So if you have not participated in something like that, maybe, you know, kind of work up to that. But in the meantime, in between time, you could also commit to documentation for different types of projects that are open source on GitHub. I definitely recommend doing that. One of the things that is um, good about GitHub is if they have like a lot of people will say like good for first timers, that sort of thing. And so that you could actively contribute on it. And so it's not much, but it definitely shows that you're out there and you are um, looking at other people's code. Reviewing other people's code is really gonna help you as, an, as a developer. So I definitely recommend to go ahead and make sure that when you're on GitHub looking at open source projects, that you're also reviewing the code that is within those, those projects and just having a general understanding of how it works. It's definitely gonna help you. If you're enjoying this video so far, make sure you give this video a like. And if you're enjoying the content that you're seeing, of course, make sure that you're subscribed if you have not already. The next thing I recommend is working on freelance projects. So a lot of people look at freelance and they're like, oh no, I'm not interested. And I was definitely one of those people that was just like, uh, no thank you. But if you're up to the challenge, I definitely recommend it. It's definitely gonna expand your portfolio in a way that you may not necessarily thought that you could expand it before because you're now working with clients. And I know that can be a little tricky to do. Um, so again, if it's something that you're interested in, I definitely recommend checking it out and learning more information about it, like how to charge, all these other things. You definitely don't wanna do any work for free. <laughs> I don't recommend doing that. You have the skills and the knowledge, so definitely charge for that. So don't think that I don't have enough experience, so I can't charge. That's not true. You can do more than the person that's asking you to build the website or whatever they're asking you to build can do. So make sure you're charging for those services. If you're really passionate about like creating web applications and things like that, I definitely recommend if you have an idea for a project, go ahead and build it. You may be able to sell that um, later on to like a company that needs to utilize it. So definitely think about the issues that you know firsthand about. If it's if you're a career changer, most of us are, then see what kind of issues or problems that you've had in the past and see how maybe you could solve that now with code, now that, now that you have more knowledge with coding. So I definitely recommend to think about those ideas as well. And if nothing, like if you don't even sell this project, at least that you're, at least you're able to like create something that's really cool. So I definitely recommend it. Network with other devs. I've, I've, I've talked about networking all the time on this channel and I will link a video above about how to go about networking in an online environment. Um, one thing I will say is that you're not gonna, you're not gonna get that first job by yourself. You're going in, you're doing the work, you're doing the interviews, absolutely for sure. But everyone needs a little help every now and again. So I definitely recommend that you network with other developers. Again, I have a whole video of how you can connect with other people within the tech industry. So definitely take that, check that out, <laughs> check that out. Um, no, check that out if you are interested in learning more about that. In addition to just general networking, also participate in hackathons. So that's um, something early on, like after the coding boot camp. Me and some of the other people that were that were within the coding bootcamp, we actually created our own hack hackathon. So you, I'm not saying create your own hackathon. That's a little ambitious, but I do recommend that you participate in one because there are other developers there. There are people that are hiring for people there as well. So if you're trying to get into the industry and you maybe wanna give it a try, I recommend trying it out at least once, seeing how you like it, and then kinda of going from there. This last tip that I'm gonna give you is the one that helped me the most, and it really put me in a position to get the position that I had when I first started as a developer. So, teaching, yay! For those who don't know, I'll tell you very briefly that um, I used to teach grade school kids how to code and then I also taught um, 
coding boot camp students had a code with a different coding boot camp than the one that I went to, but I was a teaching assistant there. So uh, for six months for the coding boot camp, and then also for six months when I was working with kids and teaching them how to code and whatnot. I had a little bit of experience teaching and like looking at other people's code and helping. So I definitely recommend that if you don't do any, if you don't do any of these other things, which it'd be sad if you really don't do any of the other things. So please do the other things. But remember, teaching is important. So even if it's just like some small thing that you know that somebody else doesn't know, like that's big because you are regurgitating that information to somebody else and it definitely helps you to remember it. So I definitely recommend that you do that at least once and like see how you like it. A lot of these things is like try it once, see how you like it. I definitely recommend it um, just so you can kind of figure out figure out what your jam is see what kind of spread you like you know see where I'm going with this it's a thing so I really hope this was helpful for you all um, if you've made it to the end of the video if you made it to the end of this video give this video a like definitely appreciate it if you haven't subscribed already go ahead and do it you know just go ahead and hit the button it's good for everybody all right now I will see you in the next video in the meantime Take care of yourself and be kind to others. See y'all.